Okay, on my bench I have an, a Yamaha RX1100U. I picked this up at actually Goodwill for $15. This thing's about 1990 is when it came out. Uh, it's a beast at 125 watts per channel. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this was one of their upper echelon models, not top of the line, but but up there. It's one of the better ones that they incorporated some video controlling into. Um, brought it home, tested it out, and uh, it, it seemed to work. It worked okay. The sound seemed a little bit off on it, and the volume pot was real scratchy. So I brought it down here, took the cover off, and uh, to clean the pot, and let me show you what I found. Okay, no video decoders here. Uh, I'm sure it's an AB amplifier. This predates the Class D amplifiers. Um, real clean inside. Doesn't look like it saw a lot of use, but looking through here, uh, basically one of these things is not like the others. What is this here? This will zoom in for me. That nah, zoom won't work. Uh, this capacitor definitely looked out of place. You can see the glue around the base where the old capacitor was. I pulled up the schematic and uh, they got the voltage right. That's an 80 volt capacitor, uh, but it's like half the value as far as microfarads are concerned. And it's really curious why anybody was screwing around in here. And uh, let me show you the underside of the board and we'll talk about it more. Now, if you look here, this is where that capacitor was replaced here and here. You noticed over here, I'll show you that in a second. Something was replaced there. Yeah, not a lot of not a lot of heat marks, just a little bit over here in the voltage regulator area. Um, but overall it looks like this unit was not used very much, which makes it really curious why somebody was messing around in here doing what they did and did such a poor job. So let me go back onto the top side of the board and show you. Okay, and over here is where this is the other component that was replaced. Uh, my first thought was, oh, they replaced another capacitor. But then I looked on the uh, schematic and I noticed that the symbol down here on the board was for resistor. So I looked on the schematic that calls for a uh, 22 um, ohm resistor and then I looked up the numbers on that that is in fact a resistor now from what I can tell looking up the markings on it it's and I, I can't find anything specific to what's written on there it's either a thermistor or a um, like a voltage limited resistor so if it goes beyond a certain temperature or if it goes beyond a voltage there's two different types and uh, those numbers didn't match those types but it, it I imagine it either uh, I guess it goes open I don't think it um, increases in resistance and it would just be getting hotter and hotter so I don't know this thing's really a mystery I can't figure out why these two were replaced with so little use on here and such a poor job done uh, but I was just going to go ahead and fix this and then I found something else which led me up to decide to make a video for this. Uh, let me remove this this power supply board and I'll show you what's under there. Okay, now under that power supply board got two capacitors here and unfortunately, I, start, I decided to make this video after I started cleaning all this out in here. You see all that black that's down in there? So we can get a little more focus on this thing. Um, that is the glue that they, they smear all over the bottom to keep the capacitors in place. Um, I don't know if one of these two capacitors is leaking and it got into the glue, made it conductive, 
um, but it was all black all across these diodes over you can see it's still over in here and um, the leads to these diodes had like green corrosion on them so basically this was turning into one big resistor and it could be just from the the voltage going through these you know diodes and the resistors there um, diodes are probably okay but I'm probably going to pull them anyway, test them, put them back in. These resistors over here, I'm more worried about that. They're carbon resistors. They could have got baked. Um, but I'll see if they're still within spec. Uh, if they are, I'll probably put them back in place because these are flame-proof resistors. I don't have any replacements for that. Uh, this one over here, I'm going to just use a metal foil half-watt. These are quarter-watt resistors. I'll use metal foil half-watt. And if everything goes well later on down the road, I'll replace that with uh, a uh, flame-proof resistor. Um, and these two capacitors, they're both going to get pulled out. You know, I could pull them out, test them, and if they check out okay, put them back in. But there's no real reason for it because a whole bag of resistors. Um, actually, uh, the one that I'm putting in there, as well as these two plus... You know, you buy them in a pack of 10, pack of 5. Uh, I think I spent like $12. So there's there's never a reason to put a 30-year-old um, a electrolytic capacitor uh, back in there, um, you know, with it as cheap as, as these are. And, you know, your electrolytics go bad. So, you know, if you're going as far as work as pulling it out, you might as well put a new one in there. Okay, now... Anytime around the uh, uh, any areas that get warm, I always check these solder joints uh, because of this lead free solder. A lot of times, from the heating and cooling, they start to separate. And you can't, I'll, I'll get a, I'll take just a photo because the camera won't zoom in that well under video. Uh, but let me see if I can show you what I found here. Let's see if we can see it here. Do you see that? Is it showing up on the camera? Okay, so that bad solder joint there is actually one of those capacitors that I'm replacing. And then we have that bank of diodes and the resistors over here. Um, all those I'm going to be redoing and checking anyway. And I'll be resoldering them with my vintage um, 6040 lead solder, which tends not to have that problem of, um, of the joints going bad. So let me start in on that. Okay, so they're out. And see all this black crud that was down in here. I'm going to clean all that out. And I'm also going to go through any place else I see this glue in contact with um, any components. Um, get that all cleaned out of there. No sense doing this, just have uh, more problems down the road. But all that's carbon. And maybe that was the problem. He was. Tr Whoever was trying to figure out on this, I do not know. Okay, so there was all the glue down in here that was bridging across these diodes, the resistors, everything, and it was all black. Basically, it had turned into a resistor itself. And I wanted to check these diodes and. Uh, Unfortunately, I started cleaning it up besides I before I decided to make the video, but all the leads on this side were all create corroded with um, like green crystals growing off them. I mean, that's how bad it was. And uh, as I tried desoldering these, um, the leads on that side would just snap off. Uh, they had oxidized all the way through. These resistors were fine, but after pulling them out, it was easier just to replace them. Uh, Parts Express, I ordered some uh, flame-proof resistors. And uh, these two blue ones, they are not flame-proof. 
Um, they don't even carry those. I'm going to call up and complain. Thanks, Parts Express. But I put them in anyway. Don't think there will be a problem. So uh, this um, switching diode I had to order that was in 1S1555. Um, the 1N4148 shows as a substitution on charts, but it's not specified in the schematic. And the uh, 1555 is faster, much faster. Um, the glass diodes that were here are no longer available. They're obsolete, but I used um, 1N4003s that I had on hand, and they're a good substitution there. Uh, these two capacitors, I had ordered 25 volts, but the lead spacings on them, the newer capacitors are more compact, and they were... Um, five millimeter lead spacings and I could have used them they just wouldn't have sat down flat onto the board uh, so I just went ahead and ordered 50 volts and replaced both of them and I replaced that re wacky resistor over here if you see it down there um, replaced that and of course I also uh, this was that other one this was that other capacitor that led into everything that was completely the wrong um, microfarad value, but at least he used the right voltage. Okay, so let's power him up. No magic smoke. And we're on tuner. Stations are changing. Buttons are working. No snaps, crackles, pops. Alright, next step. I uh, actually have to clean out the pots on the volume control. Okay, now I'm on to my original problem, which was cleaning the volume pot. There's actually uh, a left and right volume pot stacked in there, and there's going to be a third pot, I'm sure, one side or the other, uh, for this. There's like an adjustable loudness control that's on there. This here is a motor. So when you would hit the remote control, this motor would actually turn your volume control up and down. Uh, this is old school, so this is uh, for you, what is this? It's like 1990, about when this came out. Uh, so got to remove, got to remove a screw, a screw right there, and then there may be another screw hidden, but I don't think so. Uh, the other one is the nut that's behind the volume knob. Now the volume knob has an LED on it, so when you take it off there's going to be a wire. Make note of how it's coiled, and then that loudness knob comes off also, and see how the wire is coiled around the knob to give you free play for going back and forth. So let me take care of that. And I used a 7 16 deep socket to get that nut off. Okay, now to get this out, uh, this bracket that this unit screws to, there's also a screw hidden down in there. You can see it. No, let's see. That's blurry spot right there. That's, that's that other screw that attaches the bottom of this bracket. The bracket itself is in the way to getting it out. And these are the two pots you want to spray out. Okay, I use two different products when I clean. I will use contact cleaner twice to flush it out. And then I'll do a final spray with deoxid. I could do everything with deoxid. D5 is the one that you can use for flushing out. And that leaves a little bit of the um, deoxid uh, protectant in there and cleaner protectant in there. Uh, that stuff's expensive. So I do the cleaning work with that and then do the final spritz with the deoxid. And even if you got a little bit of crackle, I find after you're done with the deoxid, you can just turn the volume control a couple times and it'll usually clear that right up for you so you don't have to go taking it apart. If with that, if you get it cleaned and you still have a little crackle, you gotta take it all apart and do it over again. And I always spray right into where, let's see if you can see, the opening down the bottom. Now this particular pot has an opening up top um, that I can spray into, uh, but this other pot uh, I have to go in 
from the bottom. And I just hold it with a paper towel, try to keep the cleaner from going in place you don't want it to. And if your pot's a little stiff, uh, up in here you can put, um, there's a different deoxid product called uh, fader lube. I'll probably put it up in there to lubricate this because this is real stiff, this, uh, this upper shaft, which is um, the volume control uh, running through these collars to get down to that bottom pot. So I'll lubricate that a little bit.